chapter 5 verses 1 to 8. Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 8. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake but the fishermen had gone from them and we are washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets, and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Amen? Beloved, as part of this series, Diving Deep with Christ, I want to preach on a subject titled, Trust and Obey. Trust and Obey. In this story, about Peter and Jesus. We can see all these ingredients. I mean the ingredients of trust and the ingredients of obedience. Here was a man that toiled all night and caught nothing. But a carpenter comes and says to a fisherman, can I use your boat? The fisherman said, Maybe that's the only good thing my boat is or can be useful for. Then after the preacher had used the boat of the fisherman, he then says to the fisherman, launch out into the deep for a catch. We see Peter wanting to say no because everything Peter knew about fishing didn't line up with Jesus' instructions. And again, you are a carpenter. If it's measurement, I will listen to you. But here you are teaching me a seasoned fisherman to fish. But Peter said, nevertheless. Beloved, nevertheless saved the day. Nevertheless started the new chapter in Peter's life. Nevertheless was what empowered Peter to now launch out. Then the next instruction drop your net for a catch. Peter dropped his net. What he saw blew his mind. He called his friends to come and help. Beloved, this is one story with plenty nuggets in it. This is one account that if we begin to mine all the precious jewels in it, our lives will be better. We have seen that the first instruction Jesus gives to us after we get saved is follow me. Because you can be saved and not be following. Then after you have accepted to do the first instruction, you receive a second one. Launch out into the deep. Many of us are comfortable staying in the shallows. Many of us are comfortable playing where we are comfortable. Many of us are comfortable with people we know. Many of us are comfortable with people in our circle. But Jesus is saying launch out. There's a catch in the deep. Many of us are trying to do things that are meaningful in the shadows. But Jesus is saying, if you want to do things that will outlive you, if you want results that will make you bring other people to participate, you need to go to the deep. Beloved, then today, we are seeing the other arm of this instruction. Trust and obedience. Beloved, trust is key to everything we do on the face of the earth. 
As a matter of fact, I want to put it this way. Trust is the most essential commodity that we human beings have on the face of the earth. And also, it happens to be the scarciest of all of them. There are 8 billion people on the face of the earth, but not enough trust. Trust makes tangible, meaningful things possible. Trust transforms things and makes them become very beautiful. Trust can give you the kind of momentum that nothing else can. In scripture we see the benefits of trusting the Lord. Let's start with that. Psalm 84 and verse 12. O Lord of the armies of heaven, blessed are those who trust in you. If you want to be blessed, if you want to be blessed beyond your years, if you want to be blessed, blessings that will outlive you, trust the Lord. Because when you trust the Lord, the byproduct of that trust will be blessings. May God give you the wisdom to trust him. In Isaiah 26 verses 3 and 4, Bible says, he will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in him whose thoughts turn often to the Lord. Trust in the Lord God always. For in the Lord Jehovah is your everlasting strength. Beloved, when you trust the Lord, you stop praying this prayer point. Oh Lord, give me peace. Because when you trust him, he gives you great, perfect, abiding, overflowing peace as a reward. Again, those that trust the Lord are strong. He says, in the Lord Jehovah is my strength. If you trust the Lord, no power can run over you. If you trust the Lord, enemies will not defeat you. They will try, but they will not prevail. May God give you the wisdom to trust him. In the name of Jesus. In Psalm 125, verses 1 and 2. Those that trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Beloved, do you want security for yourself, for your family? Do you want your marriage secure? Do you want your children secure? Do you want your blessings secure? God does that. It happens through trust. When you trust the Lord, it then becomes incumbent on him to secure all that he has given you. I do not know where you are. You sleep at night. Instead of closing two eyes, you keep one open and keep the other closed because you are watching over the things that belong to you. And I want to tell you, you can do a good job, but if only you can place your trust on the Lord, the Lord never slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord never never gets tired. He will watch over you. He will watch over your family and he will grant you security. Somebody say, I will trust the Lord. Again, if you trust the Lord, that scripture tells us, you will not be defeated. Those that try to defeat you, the Lord will defeat them. This word trust, we are banding it around this morning. But the important question will be, what is trust? I like my relationship with my children. I'll be in the car and we are talking or we are listening to something and they will hear a big word. My daughter will ask, Daddy, what does it mean? Beloved, never you pretend you know a word. Seek the meaning. And the truth, sometimes she asks me about words I don't know what it means. But thank God for Siri. Thank God for Google. We go there and we see the meaning. All of us learn. Let us learn what trust means this morning. Beloved, trust means confidence. Trust means faith. Trust means assurance. Trust means reliability. What does that mean to me? To trust means to confide in so much so as to be secure without fear. Beloved, I want you to know that this book, the Bible, is filled with people like you and I 
ordinary people, husbands and wives, people they didn't have means, people that their name was not good names, people with no stature, their lives were changed when they trusted the Lord. Noah, he was a man that trusted the Lord. Even when he didn't understand the situations or the season, the Lord said it, he grabbed it, he trusted. Abraham, the Lord said, get out of your father's house to a land that will show you he trusted. What about Moses? What about Joshua? What about Daniel? And today we are reading about Peter. Trusting in the Lord is key to seeing the blessings of the Lord. Peter fished all night and caught nothing. But during the day, Jesus entered his boat and said, launch out. When it was done, he said, cast your net. And he got plenty fish that his boat began to sink. What am I saying? You've been fishing all night and you've been catching nothing. But since you became born again, Jesus got into your boat. He said, follow me. You said, let's go. Now he's giving you a word. Launch out. Who knows where you are now? Maybe you are in the deep, but you are scared of the deep. He's saying, cast your net. You are refusing to cast. But I want you to know, when you trust him, the next thing that follows must be obedience. When you trust him, you need to trust his wisdom. You need to trust that he got your back. You need to trust that he is not trying to destroy you. You need to trust his judgment. You need to trust his instructions. What is God saying to you? Again, what happens when what you hear doesn't match with your expectation? Or what happens when what you hear doesn't match what you know here was a carpenter trying to guide a fisherman but the fisherman knew this doesn't line up in fishing but if I can trust the word I can trust the man am I communicating many times someone will come to you and say the first time I ate Amala because I eat with my eyes. I have to look at it first. And it must look good. So the first day I ate Amala, I didn't eat it because I liked it. I never knew how it tasted. But I ate it because I trusted the person telling me to eat it. The person said it was in Adetutu's house. And we sat at the table and they opened mama was there, all of us. And he opened the food. I looked beyond the food and saw the meat. The borokoto and the shokoto. There was nothing that was missing in that plate. Then Tutu said, Pastor, today you are gonna try Amala. My heart sank. Tutu said, Pastor, you will like it. The color didn't gel with me. But because I trusted her day Tutu, she said, Eat it, you will like it. Beloved, I took the first helping and made sure the meat was more than the amala. Guess what? By the time I finished that plate, I was struggling to finish the whole amala on the table. Today, I am addicted to amala. What am I saying? It wasn't the amala that drew me to it. It was the person that drew me to it. Peter said, I know what you are saying don't make sense. But I know that you make sense. You are the Messiah. You are the Redeemer. You are the Son of God. You created all, which means I trust you. Then I can trust your word. Am I communicating? What is it that God is saying to you that don't add up? What is it that you are hearing but you are hesitating to do because the word doesn't fit what you know? I want you to let go of looking at the word. Look at the one that has spoken. Look at the one. Go back into his history. Go into his antecedents and you will see that he is faithful and trustworthy. He does no one any harm and he will change your life for glory. Shout a big amen. amen. That's what Peter did. Peter said, nevertheless, 
I know this department more than you. But nevertheless, I've been doing this since I was a young man. And here you are, your first day in the water. Nevertheless, I mean, I've had many catch to my name. You haven't caught anything before. Nevertheless, I will trust the person that is talking to me. And he did. And he obeyed. And today we are telling his story. Beloved, trust is a very powerful thing. And if you can put your trust in the Lord, your life will never again be the same. Shout a big amen. Let us look at some facts about trust. One, trust is the most expensive thing you can ever give to any, any man. Food is cheap. A ride is cheap. A car is cheap. A house is cheap. All of them pales in comparison when you compare them to trust. When you give someone trust, you have given them your life. When you give someone trust, you have given them the power of life and death. When you give someone trust, you will bend over backwards to please them. When you give someone trust, you will go an extra mile to see that they are happy. When you give someone trust, you will displease yourself to please them. When you give someone trust, it stops being about you. It becomes about them. That's why you must be careful how you trust. That's why you must be careful who you trust. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. That one cannot fail. Trust in the Lord. It will not disappoint. Trust in the Lord. You will have no regret. Trust in the Lord. He will do you good. Trust in the Lord. He will change your life. Trust in the Lord. Everything will turn around. But guess what? Trust is a two-way street. If you trust in the Lord and the Lord can't trust in you, there's a problem. If I trust in the Lord and the Lord cannot trust me, I can't get anything tangible from I remember growing up. And sometimes you you be in a house where a house of a rich man or a rich woman and their son is your friend. And the son is busy hanging around the father's bedroom or hanging around where the khakis are or hanging around the living room. I won't forget what happens when that father wants to leave the house, when the child trusts the father, but the father doesn't trust the child. You will always hear the father, come out, let me lock my room. <laughs> ah, but daddy, we are still watching video. Listen to me. Come back when I come back, and you can start watching the video. But for right now, I'm going out to a meeting, and I want to lock my door. Everyone out. That man is saying something. He trusts me, but guess what? I don't trust him. There will be no blessings for him. I ask you again, can the Lord trust you? Oh, I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. Trusting the Lord alone and you are not trustworthy will not make the Lord release what is in his hands. When you trust the Lord, the Lord should be willing and able to trust you. He says of, about Abraham, Abraham is my friend. Imagine God calling a man his friend. Beloved, every meaningful relationship, whether marriage, friendship, partnership, mentoring, ministry, every meaningful relationship hinges on trust. If you don't trust anybody, you can't go far with them. If God don't trust you, he can't go far with you. You need to begin to deepen your relationship with Christ. You need to dive deep with Christ. You need to develop trust with the Lord. Yes, you trust him, but he should be able to trust you. It is when that happens that a highway is established between heaven and yourself that channels blessings into your life. Somebody say, I will trust the Lord. In the first service, I told him about a boy that came to the beach to play 
And on that day, he had received a quarter, 25 cents from his father for something he did. So when he got to the beach, wanting to play with his friends, he remembered that his quarter was in his pocket. And he may lose it in the sand in the beach. So he looked around for where to hide it. Eventually, something in him kicked in. I need someone I can trust. He looked around the entire beach and found a middle-aged woman in his mid-fifties. He approached her. She was sunbathing. And when he came, he greeted her. Good afternoon, ma'am. She said, good afternoon, young man. How can I help you? He said, can I ask you a few questions? The woman said, yes, you can. The first question was, are you a Christian? The woman said, yes, of course, I'm a Christian. He said, thank you. He said, can I ask you one more? He said, yes. He said, do you read your Bible every day? The woman said, of course I do. And as a matter of fact, I have the Bible here with me. I've been reading it before you came. He said, yes, thank you very much. He said, there's one last question. The woman said, is this an interview or what? The boy said, can I ask you one more? He said, yes. He said, do you pray every day? The woman said, yes, of course, I pray every day. The young boy said, thank you very much. He dipped his hand in his pocket and brought out his fortune, 25 cents, and gave to the woman and said, can you hold this for me? I want to go play with my friends. And I'll take it when I come back. The woman said, yes, you can keep it with me. And she kept the money. Listen, she had wanted to leave the beach, but because of the trust the boy reposed in her, she stayed extra two hours. And when the boy finished playing, he came back to her and said, we are done playing. Can I have my money now? She put her hand in her handbag and took the fortune and gave to her. And he said, thank you very much, ma'am. God bless you. He left. He came to the beach knowing something. That those that trust Jesus can be trusted. Can you? You trust Jesus. Can you be trusted? The people around you, do they know you as a trustworthy person? Because unless there's trust, you expect me to go far with you, but I can't trust you. You expect me to let down my guard. I can't trust you. You expect me to give you my 25 cents fortune. I can't trust you. Pray, my father, make me a trustworthy person. My father, make me a trustworthy person. My father, make me a trustworthy person. Beloved, there's no rush in trust. When there's a hymn, when we walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And to all who will trust and obey. Listen, beloved, there is no shortcut. There is no microwave principle. There is no rush. Hear me and hear me now. Trust is developed. Trust is nurtured. Trust is deepened. You can't expect me to trust you just because of you. No, it don't work like that. God cannot trust you just because you are a Christian. It don't work like that. You need to develop a relationship with him as you walk in the light of his word. As you pray, just like the little boy asked the woman. As you meditate on his word. As you live your life walking in step with the Lord. Then you begin to develop that relationship of trust. Then the Lord begins to release himself to you. Then the Lord begins to trust you with his secrets. May the Lord trust you. I say may the Lord trust you. I say again may the Lord trust you. Beloved trust. Must be followed with obedience. If there is trust and no obedience. Everything is a lie. When you trust someone, you obey them. I did to say eat. I obeyed. I ate. My wife cooks and brings out and say eat. I eat. Obedience must follow trust. 
When you trust someone, when they tell you, let's go, you go. When they tell you, stop, you stop. When they say, meet me, you meet them. When you trust the Lord, you must obey the Lord. We do these things here these days as Christians that all we care about is the path that benefits us. But when it comes to obedience, we say no, we are not, we didn't sign up for that. You cannot trust and not obey. Again, you cannot be trusting one and trusting the other. No man can serve two masters. You cannot be married and still have your girlfriend on the side. You cannot be married and still be trusting your boyfriend. If you are married, that's when you cut off. Jesus is saying, when you get married to me, you need to say bye-bye to the kingdom of darkness. Jesus is saying, you can't be listening to me and listening to Satan. You can't be listening to me and doing what Satan is asking you to do. He says, I want total, complete obedience. Beloved, even in America today, you don't complain when they send you an offer letter and say, we've hired you. Then they send some secret agents to invade your life and say they are doing background check. Think about it. The first one is called public trust. And if you fail public trust, you can never get the job. Because the public cannot trust you. And what is public trust? The first thing they do is, do you have good or bad credit? If your credit is bad, you cannot get public trust approved. Because the company that you are owing trusted you and gave you the product on credit. And after you use the product, you refuse to pay. If we hire this person, it's going to put our company in trouble. Again, when they have seen someone that they, they pass public trust, pass the second one, well, they were doing the le last level of clearance. They said to the person, we see you have dual citizenship. You are Nigerian and you are American. We can't give this job to anybody with dual citizenship. So if you want this job, because of how sensitive it is, you must renounce your Nigerian citizenship. You must return their passport back to them. And have Nigerian government write a letter saying you are no more their citizen. Then we can give you the job. Many people here have done it. And because you want the job, you just throw away the passport. Get the letter from the government and say nonsense. Since I've been the, what has it benefited me? I have renounced their citizenship. <laughs> You know, for some of us that were born in Nigeria, they changed the color of the passport now. The passport is not green anymore. The passport is now red. <laughs> so, so I had a story two days ago that a woman was traveling with the new passport. And as she got to the country where she was going, they looked at me and said, you are a fraud. We know their passport is green. <laughs> this one, this is a fake passport. <laughs> So what am I trying to say? They make you renounce citizenship of where you were born because they want total and complete allegiance. It is not a bad thing to have two jobs. Though. It's okay to pay the bills. But imagine if you are working for this company and your second job is with their competition. They cannot keep you. It is clash of interest you cannot do that. That's what God is saying. If you trust me, then you must serve me and me alone. Then you must submit under me. Then I should be the only voice speaking to you. Stop listening to those you're listening to. Stop listening to the world and pay attention to me. When you trust me, I will do you good. Somebody say trust in the Lord. Say it again, trust in the Lord. Again, beloved, your trust must be demonstrated. It's not just saying, I trust the Lord, I trust the Lord. If you trust the Lord, you have to prove that you trust him. That's why in Babylon one day the king built an idol, golden idol. 
and wanted everyone to bow before it. But three Hebrew boys said, King, your idol is very beautiful. But guess what? We will not bow before your idol. And we know that you can kill us. That's fine. And the God we trust is able to deliver us. But King, let us save you with all the things you may want to say to us. Even if our God does not save us, we will not bow. That is trust being proven. Daniel prayed even though he knew that praying was a crime. He prayed. Your trust in the Lord will be proven. Oh, God is high and mighty. Highly exalted. Let's bring it home to people. Your trust. If you say you trust me. I like Godfather. Godfather is the best movie that I've ever watched in my own estimation. I love Godfather 1, 2, 3. Mm, I like 1 and 2. I like how the baker came to Don Corleone, the Godfather, and begged him to help his son-in-law with his green card. And Don Corleone said to the baker, I may be needing for you to do something for me one day tomorrow can I trust you he said yeah, yes godfather yes godfather and he gave him the ring to kiss and he kissed the ring and the deal was sealed a few days later the son in law that was uh, in immigration deportation was released and one day came it wasn't the godfather himself that came he was his children this one is owing our father. And they came and he paid. What am I trying to say? If you trust the Lord, if you trust your friends, a day will come when you will have to prove your trust. A day will come when you will have to stand with them and show them that for real your trust is not a mouth. That you are willing to go the extra mile. I want to ask you here now, the people in your circle, how long will you suffer with them until you say that you've had enough? If there's anybody in your circle, you will throw under the table or under the bus because their trouble is too much. You don't even trust them. When you trust someone, you will follow them to the gate of hell. That's what trust is. When you trust someone, when they are struggling, you struggle with them. When they are suffering, you suffer with them. As a matter of fact, you will suffer for them because you trust them. Who do you trust? Or who trusts you? Because it's not, we're talking trust, 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 trust. Are you trustworthy? When people give you their trust, does it fall on the ground? Can people trust you? Beloved, listen to me. I do not take my word lightly. I do not take my relationship with people lightly. I am someone that loves loyalty. I will be loyal to you to my debt. Even if it cost me my reputation, I will put it on the line for anyone that I trust. Will you do that for me? Will you even do that for your husband? Will you even do that for your wife? That's trust. When we stand on the altar and say, this marriage, you know, pastors have changed it. So it's for better, for best. That's stupidity. There's no better for best. There's winter, there's summer, there's spring, and there's fall. In life, everything is not always good. There are times when even God will allow the love to be proven. And you stand on the altar because of the size on the price of the wedding gown. Because of now he has hair. He's looking very good. He has money. He has a good job. He has a good car. A day might come when all those things will grow wings and fly away. But the question is, for wise people, you will understand that I didn't fall in love with the money. I didn't fall in love with the car. I didn't fall in love with all those things. I fall in love with the person. It is the person. I want you to know something. Someone may fall now. And when they fall, God uses that opportunity to chase away the chaff. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. 
Listen to me, beloved. When things are good, you cannot know who your friends are. You don't know who cares for you or who loves you. But God helps us to sieve out all the chaff in our life by allowing the storm to come. And there are some that will run away from the storm and never come back. Then God then repositions you. But by then, they already left. Who am I talking to? Can your friends trust you? Are you trustworthy? When you say you will do something, do you go on to do it? Trust must be demonstrated. Oh, I like this scripture. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 to 4. But now the Lord who created you, O Israel says, don't be afraid. I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, your Savior, the Holy One of Israel. I gave Egypt and Ethiopia and Seba to Cyrus in exchange for your freedom as your ransom. Oh, I like the last part. This one makes my body shake. Others died that you might live. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me and honored and I love you. That is the price. That is the benefit of trust. If you trust the Lord, you will never go wrong. If you trust the Lord, you will never be put to shame. But I must warn you, Trust is in degrees. Trust is in levels. Trust is in categories. The level of trust that you have with God will determine the amount of access that God will give you. We all sitting here now don't have the same level. Somebody will say in Jesus name and I have to repeat it for one week before things will change. But somebody will, G, everything will transform. Why? Because it's about relationship. Have you ever walked into a bank and there's a line of about 20 people and you just walk in and somebody behind the counter looks and sees you and abandons everyone. Start, hey, go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, even in America, even in this land, there's a place you enter if you have enough money in that bank. The moment you enter, the manager himself comes and takes you behind the door and said, do you know people come to withdraw money and they are drinking coffee while their cash is being counted? Relationship. Beloved, trust is in levels. You don't trust her as you trust her. You don't trust her. And trust is even with Jesus. Jesus chose 12 disciples. Of the 12 disciples, he didn't trust all of them the same. Of the twelve, he always will choose nine to be at the valley and three to go with him to the mountain. But even amongst the three, he will choose one as a special. You know why? Because Jesus Christ and John built a relationship growing up together as children. Their mothers were sisters. And I believe that when they were growing up, Jesus and John played together. And as they played, John saw who he was. John fell in love with him. They had this bond with them that when Jesus wanted to start his ministry, he didn't go looking for strangers. If you look at all the disciples of Jesus, they have something in common. They knew each other. James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Peter and Andrew brothers. Peter and Andrew went and brought their friend. Philip, Nathaniel, all these people were connected. You know why? Because Jesus chose people that already had trust walking amongst them. Jesus chose people he trusted and made them his inner circle. As a matter of fact, when Jesus hung on the cross dying, his half brothers and sisters were still alive. All of them were available. Who did Jesus hand his mother over to? John, he hung on the cross and said to John, behold your mother. Mama, behold your son. Abandon those ones at home. They will kill you with hunger. 
You see this one? I trust him. To, and the Bible says from that day, Mary lived with John until she died. Can I trust you? Can you trust him? Can your friends trust you with their children? Can your friend trust you with her husband? Can your friend trust you with his wife? Some of you are praying that somebody may die that you take over. I didn't call anybody's name. But it's the person sitting beside you. Just look at the person sitting beside you. It's them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Can I take 10 more minutes? Beloved, listen. Trust is very powerful. It is very powerful in the sense that it can give life and it can kill you. That's why you must be careful who you trust. Listen to me. If you trust someone that don't trust you, you are setting yourself up for destruction. If you trust someone that trusts your enemies, you are setting yourself up for destruction. The question will be when you live here, are the people I trust trustworthy enough to be trusted? I want you to know that everyone that ever was destroyed on the face of this earth were destroyed by people that they trusted. We read Julius Caesar in school. And there is this statement that Caesar made that anyone that is a literature student will not forget. When they rallied around him and were stabbing him, it was okay that all the other people, Cassius and all those were stabbing Caesar. But Caesar expected Brutus to fight for him, to defend him, to even die with him. But Caesar didn't know that Brutus already sold out. And while they were stabbing Caesar, Caesar ran towards Brutus, believing that Brutus would save him. Brutus drew his dagger. And Caesar, the last word of Caesar was, Ete Brute Brutus. Even you, Brutus, is there a Brutus on your team? There may be someone you are taking into confidence. You are loving. You are supporting. But this person is your Brutus. This person is waiting for an opportunity to kill you. Dump them and save your life. Jesus made that mistake, but it wasn't a mistake. He chose 12. But he will always say, have I not chosen 12 of you? But one of you is the devil. Because Jesus needed a betrayer. When someone is with you and also with your enemies, they are your enemy. When someone is laughing with you and they are laughing with your enemy. You need to be wary of them and cut yourself off from them. They are waiting for the right price to betray you. Jesus, Judas was talking to the high priest and their group and was sitting on the table and eating with Jesus. And one day, when the price was right, I said it before, if I were to betray Jesus, Canada must be involved. The USA, Saudi Arabia. I won't want 30 pieces of silver. You must give me continents. And this man settled for 30 pieces of silver. How cheap, how low. I warn you again. Be careful who you trust. Anyone you trust has the key to your life. They can have a ladder that makes you rise up. Or they can have a dagger to kill you. Watch those around you. What is their motive? What? There's a story I heard. One day, Mohammed was going off to war. And uh, as he prepared for that battle, he called his second in command and said to him, My beautiful wife, I have locked her inside the room. And this is the key to the room. If you wait two days and I don't return, please go and unlock her because I put her there for her own safety. So two days, if you don't see me, know that I have died in the battle so you can go release her. 
The second one said, thank you, sir. I'll do that. I'll do that. Inshallah, God be with you. So Muhammad rode off for the battle. 30 minutes into the journey, he looked back and saw dust behind him. And when he slowed down, he could hear the galloping of horses coming. So he stopped. At least he knew he wasn't the enemy. It is people that are on his side. When he stopped, who did he see? His second in command said to him, Oga, hey, I just came to tell you that you gave me the wrong key. <laughs> you did it, huh? Mohammed deliberately gave him a wrong key to test whether he can trust him. And he wasn't even gone one hour. The man had gone to try the lock to go take the yo-yo that is inside. So Mohammed just came down and took his sword and killed him. I wanted to test you. I gave you the wrong key deliberately. And you didn't even wait two days. I wasn't gone one minute. You went and tried the lock. <laughs> The lock I use in my house is too strong. You can't come in to take my Stella. <laughs> I lock her up where we are. It's for life, two of us. Forever. But do you learn anything there? Be careful who you trust. Be careful who's showering praises on you. Be careful because they may just be waiting for an opportunity to destroy you. Amen. Beloved, there are too, much, too many nuggets in this. But let me tell you, as I close, those you must not trust. The Bible wrote it clearly. Those you must not. Micah chapter 7, verse 5. Don't trust anyone. Not your best friend. Not even your wife. For the son despises his father. The daughter defies her mother. The bride causes her mother-in-law. Yes, a man's enemies will be found where? Say it again. Good. Beloved, there are people you must not trust. One, do not trust anyone that dines with you and dines with your enemies. That's what destroyed Samson. Delilah was dining with Samson, sweetheart, baby. And she was also babying the Philistines. And when the prize was right, she sold him and cried afterwards. Judas was dining with Jesus. When the prize was right, Judas sold Jesus and took 30 pieces of silver because he believed that was what Jesus Christ was worth. David was trusting Absalom, his son. Absalom woke up one day and wanted to destroy him and take the throne. When King Saul wanted to destroy David, he didn't look for a soldier. He looked for David's wife, his daughter, and wanted her to give David. Abel was destroyed by his own brother, Cain. Be careful who you trust. Never you trust anyone that is dining with your enemies. You like me. You also like my enemy. Well, which means your relationship to my enemy is me. The reason my enemy wants you still my friend is that you get from me, you tell my enemy. You are an informant. You are a mole. Be careful. Again, you mustn't trust anyone that cannot defend you. If someone cannot open up or speak up to defend you in your face or when you are not there, don't trust them. They cannot be anything with you. Anyone that trusts you and you will trust must be able to fight for you to defend you whether you are again even whether you are right or wrong they have to defend you first and come back and say my dear you are wrong in this one 
But to be there and join them to destroy the person you say you trust or love, never you accept it. Again, you mustn't trust anyone that lack loyalty to you. When someone doesn't demonstrate loyalty, don't trust them. Loyalty is key to trust. If you are not loyal to me, I can't trust you. Watch out. Anyone that say they trust you, they must be with. I mean, the 12 apostles were loyal to Christ to the end. Even after Jesus died and they were being forced to recant what they believe, they said, we rather die. Let me share with you how the 12 disciples died. Andrew was crucified for what he believed. Bartholomew was beaten to death and then crucified. James, the son of Alphaeus, was stoned to death. James, the son of Zebedee, was beheaded. John was exiled for his faith and died in the Isles of Patmos. Judas, not Iscariot, was stoned to death. Matthew was speared to death. Peter was crucified upside down. Philip was crucified. Thomas was speared to death. Matthias was stoned to death. Listen to me. Anyone that said they trust you, but they are not willing to be hurt because of you, they are not ready yet. They are not ready yet. This is a lesson in life and a lesson in trust. Look at the people around you. When you were down, how many rallied around to support you? But when you fell, it was an opportunity to tell your story. <laughs> All these swagger don't finish you. They don't follow. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Beloved, again, do not trust anyone who loves you because of what you do and not because of you. Because the day they find someone that does what you do better than you, just like the disciples of John, they were following John, <laughs> following John, for all day we are hearing, repent for the kingdom of God is coming. Repent. And one day they saw Jesus and he was doing miracles. How they abandoned John. That's what broke the man's heart. Okay, tomorrow morning we are going to crusade in, uh, in Greenbelt. In the morning John didn't see anybody. The next news he had was that all his disciples were with Jesus now in Upper Marlboro doing crusade. John says, is it how my life ends? Be careful. Those that trust you must love you. Not what they get from you. Not what you give them. Not what you do. Oh, beloved, we have so much meat in this. But I have to close. I know you got it. Lastly, never you trust anyone who speaks this language. What is in it for me? We are doing it together, but you're always looking for your own. I want my own. I want my own. I want my own. You can't go far with them. Judas wanted his own. And when the time was ripe, he sold Jesus, his master, to get his own. Amen? Have I helped you this morning? Rise up on your feet. Remember, to dive deep with Christ you must have a daily walk with him you must trust him and you must be trustworthy that he may trust you you must live your life every day to please him you must do everything in your power to live a life of example that demonstrates who he is you must like that little boy demanded you must study the word every day. You must also pray every day. Then you must be a person that can be trusted. Beloved, we must get hurt sometimes for people we love. For people we trust. They will hurt you. People will hurt you because of them. And that's how you prove that you trust them and that you can be trusted. Lift up your hand. Our Father in heaven, here are your people. Beloved, remember the clarion call is to trust and obey. How many people this morning will want to trust Jesus 
and obey him expressly, intently, immediately. How many people here that already trust him but you are lacking in the area of obedience? How many people will love to begin to obey him? He said to Abraham, move, he moved. He said to Moses, move, he moved. He said to that other person, stop, he stopped. Beloved, that same God is your God. Wherever you are this morning, say to him, my father, I will trust you with all my life, with all my time, with all my strength. I will obey you. I will serve you. I will live to please you. In the name of Jesus. 